So yeah, a uh, little bit of introduction about me. I'm co-founder of Sagnize. I've been developing Android uh, applications for over two years now. Uh, I'm a member of Super Team DAO. A little bit share for that. And I was, I was also been selected as Amulet Top 50 this year. Um, I'll just directly come to the point of my talk that building on Solana Mobile is hard. As a mobile dev coming from Web2 ecosystem to Web3 and want to build a buttery smooth application, and the guess is that it will be very, it's not going to be an easiest task, starting from integrating the Solana mobile stack, wallet connection, uh, planning on how user will interact with the wallet, and most importantly, user experience. Also, do not forget the phrase, uh, buttery smooth application. And because of the current dev toolings, as an app developer, you'll focus more on the wallet interaction part than the core features. So let's look into the current uh, cases which we have currently have the, for the interacting wallets. The first one comes is as you will start learning more about Solana mobile stack or Solana mobile itself, you'll come across Solana mobile wallet adapter, which will help you help your application connect with other uh, wallet applications for uh, approving transactions, signing messages. Now, what that means is that every time you want to approve a transaction, or every time you want a user to sign a message, it will take you to the other application and it will sign a message there. What that again means is that it's going to be not be, no, it's not going to be inside your application itself, which is not something in your hand itself. Now, imagine your user, imagine throwing your user to other application every time you want to sign a message, every time you want to uh, approve a transaction, which uh, pretty much your crypto application is based on that, that totally sucks, right? Now, you'll start realizing that you'll start realizing that your app revolves more around the wallet interaction part than your core feature itself, which is not something anyone will intend when you're building a mobile application or even building a business out of it, right? Now, the users will be spending more and more time on the third-party wallet application than your, use, than your application itself. Now, what this means is that they will be spending more time on signing messages, uh, transaction approval, and everything. Now, as a company or even a solo dev, you'll not have control over this experience, which surely sucks. Now, this definitely adds a barrier to building a smooth, buttery application. So let's look into the other way which one can make this or make this case even much better. Now, I had built a Solana mobile scaffold long back. Uh, you can look into this like. Uh, whenever a user needs clicks on signing a transaction, a wallet application like Solfair opens up. Uh, no hard cases for Phantom. I just had to use one. Um, one needs to connect their application if it's for the first time. Then they sign the transaction. Give and take, it takes around 15 to 20 seconds to uh, complete the transaction. Now, when it comes to this, just imagine this experience for every transaction ever, right? Now, this is something not someone would be interested in when they are building application. So let's look into the other case which currently we have, which is providing in-app wallets. Now, what in-app wallet means is, as the name suggests, providing wallets inside the application itself, or more like building a wallet infrastructure. Now, this is great if you are a big funded company. But if you are just a solo dev or even a new team, building a wallet infrastructure, handling security, encryption, and what not, that's just not feasible. And even if you try to make, even if you try to build a, a wallet infrastructure, you'll start realizing that you are just becoming wallet company like Phantom or Soulflare or even Backpack now. So that's something definitely adds more barrier to your uh, buttery smooth application, right? So yeah, like what should be what should be the way? How can we simplify this process? And as a dev, how, what can I do? so that I can just focus on building Pokemon video dancing viewer app and just uh, focus on that, right? So how, how can we do that? Uh, I believe that we have increased the barrier to building the mobile application and provide that good experience by having very less dev tooling. And don't get me wrong, Solana mobile stack is amazing. We have seen so many apps getting built using that, using that stack itself. But we still miss a lot of dev tooling in terms of that uh, providing great application. As a dev, if you want to build an amazing app, monetize the application, build a business out of it, that's definitely something is still missing. But that changes today. Wow, it's not playing. Maybe not changes now, 
in maybe in switching apps for approving like transactions again and again not anymore with Saganize simplify your Solana experience with just a few taps tap on mint enter your predefined passcode and it's done SDK early access open now That's in-app transactions, introducing in-app transactions by Sagonize. You focus on your core features while we handle the wallet interaction part by providing much better user experience, user retention, and well, you guessed it, much better battery smooth experience. Um, earlier I talked about that how mobile spaces still misses that dev tooling uh, required for you know it mobile battery mo battery smooth application and i believe that we are that missing infra that is going to be simplifying that mobile development experience and makes mobile payment exciting again so let's look into how it works um, the Saganize SDK will be a solo SDK which will be used in a third party application. If the user is new, it will ask you to create an account. It will ask you to connect to the Google. Once we get a verified email, we'll create an account for you by asking, like, you'll create a new wallet, you'll either import seed phases, just like normal wallet stuff. And then after the new thing comes, which is adding, adding password. Now, one thing which is important to note is that this is very relatable. You'll go to different websites, you'll create new passwords. You won't care about it. But if someone just throws a new term and says that, hey, create this, you'll just get, you'll, you'll be like, oh, that's something new. Maybe I won't do it. And you'll just go away from that process. But you'll, add, you'll create, a, uh, to go ahead, you'll create a password which will be used in the other, other application for the login process. And the next part comes is which is setting up the pin, which will be used for doing the transaction, which we'll talk about later. So after you create your account, account gets created, you, get it, you directly get redirected to the transaction approval part, you enter your pin and you approve the transaction. And if you were logged in, then it will just show like, the, like a normal wallet application. Now, in terms of security, which again, I'll talk about that later, maybe off stage, but just a little bit more info that user still owns their wallet, exp wallet uh, ownership because we never directly have the wallet with us. It's always encrypted with the password and the pin. And that's why every time you want to do transaction, we always ask for a pin and without you give us the pin or even a password, we can never open your wallet, which still provides the ownership to the wallet, to the user. Now, if you were just uh, logging in, you'll just connect with the Google account if you're already had created uh, an account and you just enter the password and it will just log you back inside the uh, application. Now, so yeah, uh, Solo SDK, the early access is open now. If you're a mobile team or developer who wants to build, we'll feel free to fill the form, which will be there on saganize.com. Uh, we'll be happy to set you up with the SDK. Another alpha public beta should be launched very soon. So that will also help a lot in understanding how things work around. But coming back to the point, which is, I want to just add more info on that is, we should rather not focus on the narrative of onboarding next billion or million users. We should be focusing on the narrative of building more next 100 or 1,000 applications or mobile applications, which will automatically bring the next million users towards the space itself. So uh, cheers to the next 1,000 mobile apps. Um, thank you so much. Um, Sidraj40 on Twitter, and I'll be around at Breakpoint. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.